Hello everyone, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy in beautiful New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Today, we will discuss the steep spiral. The keys to success for this maneuver are, number one, complete your A squared, B squared, C squared checklist. Number two, good pitch control on the initial roll in. Number three, adjust the bank angle to compensate for the wind and maintain a constant radius. Number four, maintain coordination throughout the maneuver in both spirals to the left and to the right. Number five, use the trim control properly to assist in the spiral and help with accurate airspeed control. Number six, maintain your orientation by keeping your eyes outside and only glancing in at the airspeed and altimeter. Number seven, roll out on a designated heading. And number eight, do not stall at any point in the maneuver. And remember, from our commercial video on the keys that apply to all the commercial maneuvers, smooth and positive inputs on the flight controls with constant small corrections. And this is not an instrument maneuver. You must be looking outside in a steep spiral. References for this maneuver will not be the way that I do it or the way that one of my instructors showed me or any specific flight school's method, but rather the Airplane Flying Handbook 8083-3 Charlie. By the way, the Epic Flight Academy Standardization Manual follows the Airplane Flying Handbook 8083-3 Charlie. Please open the Airplane Flying Handbook to Chapter 10, page 3, and follow along as I walk you through the maneuver. The goal here is to master a maneuver for the rapid dissipation of altitude while remaining over one spot. The maneuver is done in a gliding turn, which means that the throttle will be at idle power. While maintaining a constant radius around a specific point. Given that, the maneuver can be very useful for emergency landings. However, remember that while there are similarities between a steep spiral and an emergency descent, the reasons for using the two maneuvers are different and the airspeed and configuration are usually different. Please note that the maneuver should be mastered by turning in both directions regardless if the maneuver is to a simulated emergency landing or not. Notice that the first paragraph on page 10-3 states that we should accomplish a minimum of three turns and start at an altitude high enough to allow for recovery at no lower than 1,500 feet. That's AGL, of course. Here in figure 10-2, it shows three spirals. However, you are going to want to practice this maneuver from higher altitudes that allow for more than three spirals. And when you do this, you will see that you must be conscious of wind direction and speed at varying altitudes and the fact that both wind direction and speed change as you descend. This will require judgment and skill from the pilot to maintain a constant radius around that specific surface-based reference. Notice in figure 10-2 on 
page 10-3 that the spiral is around the approach end of a runway and that the first turn is downwind, allowing the pilot to gauge the steepest bank and this helps in planning the rest of the maneuver. As skill is gained in the maneuver, plan to roll out on various headings that put you perpendicular to or directly into the wind or at your low key point, rather than just rolling out on a specific heading. Mastering this will be very useful in the event of an actual emergency. Additionally, noting the altitude lost during each revolution will help you determine when to roll out in an actual emergency so as not to be too high or too low. Practice the rollout so that you recover to a wings level glide with no change in your airspeed. So, how do we go about actually doing this maneuver? Well, to initiate the steep spiral, your A squared, B squared, C squared checklist will help you set up properly and be clear of air traffic and other hazards. The next thing to do is to fly up to your ground reference point with it on your left if the spiral is to be to the left or on your right if the spiral is to be to the right. Now, when you set up on your point, be conscious of the wind. Commonly, we begin the maneuver with a tailwind. Once we build proficiency, we should be able to enter the spiral with the wind from any direction. However, starting downwind means that we will see our steepest bank angle first and as we mentioned, we'll be able to gauge the rest of the maneuver from there. By definition, we want the steep spiral to be, well, steep. And this means up to, but not exceeding, 60 degrees of bank. So the pilot must consider the distance from the reference point since this is what establishes the turning radius. So you'll need to be in pretty close to your selected ground point as you approach it and roll in to your turn. From your perspective at altitude, it may appear that you are almost flying right over the top of the point. So let's say we're doing a spiral to the left in a 172 you'll want to bring the reference point down the left side of the fuselage just inside the landing gear. In a high wing 172 and turning to the left, this won't be difficult. But when doing the spiral to the right or in a low wing airplane, you'll have to do some planning to bring the point in close and some timing to roll in just as you come up on a point that you can't see. So time it so that just a few seconds prior to your roll in, you bring the power to idle and apply carburetor heat if you're flying an aircraft with a carbureted engine. Now, this is a critical point in the maneuver because you want to have good pitch control as you slow the aircraft to attain the proper entry airspeed. The recommended entry airspeed in the EPIC standardization manual is 80 knots. Why 80 knots? Well, to answer this, let's consider two parameters, stall speed and maneuvering speed. 
If you're flying a Cessna 172S, please turn to Chapter 5 of your POH or PIM and refer to the stall speed table. Notice that the table shows speeds for rearward and most forward CG, gross weight and power at idle. Specific conditions will change, but please notice that the indicated stall speeds shown on the chart with flaps up go from 48 to 76 at a 60 degree bank angle. That's an increase of 28 knots. So to round off for safety, let's just think about a 30 knot increase in stall speed at a 60 degree bank. Now please refer to our videos on aerodynamics to review why stall speed increases with bank angle. Next, think about your VA speed or your maneuvering speed as you practice this maneuver. At gross weight, our VA is 104, but at 2200 pounds it is approximately 98 knots. So. By flying this maneuver at 80 knots, we are establishing a safe margin above the increasing stalling speed and below the decreasing maneuvering speed. Now, back to our slowing to 80 knots and roll in. Trim the aircraft to help you maintain this airspeed. As we slow to the proper airspeed, the pitch should then be lowered and the aircraft roll to its desired bank just as the reference point is reached. Maintaining a constant airspeed throughout the steep spiral maneuver is an important skill for a pilot to develop. This is necessary because the airspeed tends to fluctuate as the bank angle is changed throughout the maneuver. The gliding spiral should be a turn with a constant radius while maintaining the aircraft's position to the reference point. Mastering this will take some practice. After all, you're managing your bank angle to keep a constant radius and managing your pitch to keep a constant airspeed and managing your situational awareness relative to the point. You're also managing your altitude and other traffic, all the while managing your engine so as not to overcool it, foul the spark plugs, or develop ice if this is a carbureted engine. Operating the engine at idle speed for any prolonged period during a glide may result in overcooling fouled plugs or ice. To assist in avoiding these issues, the power should be advanced periodically and sustained for just a few seconds. When advancing the throttle, the pitch attitude must be adjusted to maintain constant airspeed and preferably this is done when headed into the wind. By doing this when headed into the wind, it will be the least disruptive to the constant radius that you're trying to maintain in the spiral. This also serves as a consistent reminder. Each time I come into the wind, I clear my engine. Mastering this skill will be useful for a variety of situations where you may want to dissipate altitude while remaining over a selected spot or area. And in any case, it will help you develop your ability to divide your attention maintain situational awareness over multiple factors, and further develop your stick and rudder skills. All of this will assist in making you 
a more proficient commercial pilot. Enjoy your steep practice and we'll see you next time.